long, long ago, in a time known only as 2011. From software and game director Hidetaka Miyazaki unleashed Dark Souls upon the world. Hidetaka Miyazaki announced, I'm tired of all these easy ass games. What we need is challenge. What we need is the feeling of accomplishment. Alright, he didn't actually say that, but he did want to focus on the feeling of accomplishment. Despite being a cult title, in April 2013, From Software announced the game had sold over 2 million copies, quadrupling the Mount Miyazaki's first title, Demon's Souls, initially sold. And what do developers do when they have something successful? Milk that baby for all it's worth! Seriously, I think my place is haunted. Like a cold splash of milk to the face, From Software released Dark Souls 2 in 2014 to over 2 million sales. This time, Miyazaki was no longer at the helm, and the overall consensus was mixed. Some would even say the milk had curdled. Boo! Fuck! Alright, no more milk jokes! But with sales still strong, continuing into the game's DLC and re-release Scholar of the First Sin, a sequel was inevitable. And in 2016, Dark Souls 3 released with Miyazaki back in charge. But, multiple titles in, could Dark Souls 3 still hold up to the previous titles, or would it just come across as a shameless cash-in? I'm not making another fucking milk joke. In the world of souls, the life of the world as you know it is linked to the life of the first flame. The problem being, like any fire, the first flame slowly peters out, and, as it does, the light of the world fades and a new age is allowed to rise. Way, way back, during the events of Dark Souls 1, when Lord of Sunlight decided he wasn't down with the fire dying, and therefore his age of ruin. I'm not down with this fire dying thing, yo. So he threw himself into the fire, as kindling for the flame, in order to extend the age of fire and rule of his children. <laughs> what a selfish jerk. Dark Souls 3 takes place after the events of both Dark Souls 1 and 2. And in present Dark Souls 3 times, a new method for extending the age of fire has been concocted. Turn a powerful lord into a lord of cinder and force them into linking the fire. Perfect! However, the game begins as something has gone wrong. A lord of cinder is refusing to link the fire. <coughs> and now, all of the previous lords of cinder have come back to life as a safety precaution and are also refusing to link the fire. So now, as a safety, safety precaution, you and Unkindled are being summoned to murder all of them and force them into becoming ashes and killing the fire. All of this because the fire is fading. Again. Dark Souls 1, fire fading. Dark Souls 2, fire fading. Dark Souls 3, fire fade. Can, can we get something different here? The fire keeps fading and needs more souls. Why don't you just, why don't you just cremate everyone with fire after they die? See that? Problem solving. You can call me Lord Control of, of the Lorave Kingdom. Yeah. My brilliance comes in spurts. Okay, look, I get that lords like Gwyn, Gwendolyn, Guinevere, Gwynloth don't seem to die, but you get the point. So, as an unkindled, you awaken in the Cemetery of Ash, a nice little place guarded by Eudix Gunder. He's there to judge if you're worthy enough to link the fire in the only way Dark Souls knows how, by seeing if you can murder him. Did you know Eudix means judge in Latin? Which means Judge Reinhold would be you. I find that very interesting, but, but I still have to kill you, B because that's how this game works. Not guilty. With Gunder defeated, you take the coiled sword you pulled from his body and use it to light the bonfire of Firelink Shrine. The firekeeper of this shrine tells you that in order to collect the Lords of Cinder, you'll need to head to the High Wall of Lothric and Lothric Castle. So, you use the bonfire to teleport, as apparently all bonfires are linked to one another. It's in the lore. And once you reach Lothric Castle, you find the High Priestess Emma who informs you that all the lords have peaced out because, for some strange reason, they don't want to die in a raging fire again. <laughs> Weird, right? So she tells you to go find them in the kingdom below so you can force them into doing their duty. Which, all in all, is good advice. But I don't listen to good advice. Welcome to Dark Souls. Scrawl.
So you take her advice and head into the Undead Settlement in Kingdom Below. The Undead Settlement being a nice little town, and I love what they did with the place. Oh, Feng Shui. Now that, that is Feng Shui. It has a very homey feel to it. Right? Sure. Oh, shit! That didn't happen. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. The Undead Settlements has been taken over by evangelists who are teaching the way of the Cathedral of the Deep to its inhabitants, which just happened to be the way of Aldrich, Saint of the Deep, and the First Lord of Cinder that we need to find. So it's onwards to the Cathedral of the Deep via the Road of Sacrifices, which is aptly named because... It was used to transport sacrifices to the Cathedral of the Deep. These sacrifices being bodies from the undead settlements who were meant to feed Aldrich, who wasn't just a saint of the deep, but also happens to enjoy eating people while luxuriating in his victim's screams. Sometimes, you find someone who connects with you so deeply, you change your very being. So it's off to find your inspiration. The Cathedral of the Deep is essentially the mandatory area of fucked up shit. You see, as it turns out, eating people isn't necessarily the healthiest diet. Flesh-eating maggot creatures are everywhere, which seems to be a direct byproduct of Aldrich's eating habits. These creatures spew out of the bodies of undead, and what do you know? There's an entire graveyard outside full of these, which seems pretty necessary for a dude whose entire shtick is eating people. There's also a Bloodborne-style beast who seems to have transformed as a direct result of listening to Aldrich. Oh, and an entire gospel of deacons who worship him. Like an entire boss worth of deacons who have been spreading the love of Aldrich oh, yeah. and are guarding his tomb he supposedly resides in. So, we'll throw in Alluring Skull, aka Delicious Delicious Noms, to distract them and take them out. And, with Aldrich's faithful deacons cleared out, it's time to confront him. It's time to confront him. It's time to confront. So apparently Aldrich resided in Irithyll of the Boreal Valley. He then went to the Cathedral of the Deep, where he gained a massive clergy and following. We love you! But, he gained so many souls from eating everybody, he was sent to Firelink Shrine and thrown into the first flame. And, when Aldrich came back to life, he said, FUCK THE FLAME! And instead of going back to his cathedral, he went back home to Irithyll because he wanted to start eating gods. So, in order to get to Irithyll, we have to go through Ferenkeep and... What do you know? Ferenkeep just happens to be the home of another Lord of Cinder, the Undead Legion of Farin. But, Farron Keep was destroyed by the Undead Legion, and now it's this. A poison-filled swamp that you have to trudge through, eh? Can we just cut it out with the poison swamps? Demon Souls. Valley of Defilement. Dark Souls. Blight Town. Dark Souls 2. Earthen Peak. Bloodborne. Nightmare Frontier. B Bjork. What is this? Why is it in every game? So fine, you trudge through the poison swamp and meet up with your first Lord of Cinder, the Undead Legion, or the Abyss Watchers. Now this is what we've been waiting for. Hey, hey, what's up, guys? Y you guys cool? I'm over, I'm right over here. So, it turns out the Abyss Watchers have gone insane. Their goal was to wipe out all signs of the dark in the Abyss, and as they're now essentially undead repeatedly coming back to life, they're perpetually killing each other. Over and over again. For eternity. Until you murder their conjoined ember form and defeat your first Lord of Cinder. This allows you passage into the Carthus Catacombs, a rotted tomb of the former Kingdom of Carthus, as well as the Smoldering Lake. Spoopy Checklist! Skeletons! Check! Demonic Beings! Check! Bigger Skeletons! Check! Spiders! Spoopy Rating! 6 out of 10! Spiders and Ventriloquist Dummies would have improved your score! Beyond the catacombs, we find 
Irithel of the Boreal Valley, a magnificent kingdom hidden away in snow and moonlight. This area is guarded by a giant watchdog and only allows passage for those in possession of a very particular doll, which we just happened to find back at Aldrich's tomb. The city has been taken over by Pontiff Sullivan, who imprisoned the former god of the land and declared himself Pope. More importantly, the city stores have been overrun by... Done. Dave? Dave? No. no. Where are you going, Dave? No. No! Dave? Fuck! I have no idea what these are supposed to be called, but I think Nope is the only fitting name. So we courageously trek past the Nopes, only to find a familiar sight. I would recognize those paintings anywhere. They're paintings and concept art straight out of Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2. Something fishy is going on here. No! 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 So remember how Pontiff Solovan, who happens to be the boss of the area, imprisoned the god? Turns out that god is Gwendolyn from Dark Souls 1, and Irithil, the Boreal Valley, is at the base of none other than Anor Londo, City of the Gods, a major location of Dark Souls 1. So hey, we killed Pontiff Solovan, so let's go free Gwendolyn. Maybe you'll have a sweet reward in the store. So remember how we were supposed to find Aldrich, but he did that whole running away to Irithel thing? Well, that's him. And that's Gwendolyn. So Aldrich ate, or is in the process of eating, Gwendolyn when we find him. Which is badass! You're fighting someone who is literally in the process of eating a god. What could this fight possibly bring? It's an easy fight. Look, I'm not in the business of sugarcoating here. It's a- uh, he's, he's fucking easy. Two Lords of Cinder down, so it's time to head into the Irithil Dungeon and track down the next one, Yorm the Giant. The Irithil Dungeon is essentially the Tower of Latria from Demon's Souls 2.0. It's a moody, atmospheric area where- FUCK THESE GUYS! See these jailers? Yes, these ones prancing around like it's Macy's Thanksgiving Parade? Well, they have a fun ability called DRAINING DOWN YOUR HEALTH BAR! You see, if they notice you, and you get in their vicinity, they'll magically temporarily shove down your max health. These guys are the worst. See, it's funny, because you thought the Nopes were the worst. And actually, you would be right. The Nopes are still the worst. Once you manage to bust out of the prison, you'll find yourself in the profaned capital. Why there's an underground city that's connected to a prison, I don't know. But I guess you could say the profaned capital is Dark Souls' version of Australia. Like everywhere else in DS Trace, the capital is decrepit and falling apart, apparently this time due to a profaned flame, which rained from the sky killing all things human. In other words, literal Ragnarok. Oh? You question the possibility Ragnarok occurred in this profaned capital? Well, then answer me why we find yet MORE nopes down here! This time hanging out in toxic sludge! Oh yeah, there's also thousands of dead bodies piled up around mounds of treasure. But mainly the nopes, though. We also find a giant hanging out and moping in a throne, who... Uh, oh. It's Yorm, another one of the Lords of Cinder. He's all sad and shit, because when he linked the fire, it was for the purpose of trying to save his people, and specifically a loved one from the profane flame. And... yeah. It completely failed, and instead fire rained from the heavens, killing everybody. Good job, Yorm. Good job, I say. In an homage to Demon Souls, you grab a Storm Ruler, which has a special attack that will knock chunks out of the giant's health. Also, it renders him incredibly easy to dispatch, so you grab his ashes for the flame, and... The fire fades, and awaits its one last lord. What? Who's that? No! No, not here again! I'm trying to think of a word. How about get good? Oh yeah, I guess that's one. And finally, it's time to face the dancer for real. Not that you couldn't do it before, she's just incredibly difficult under level. Don't make me repeat myself, Dave. How did you even get here? Ooh, Why does the weird shit always happen to me? And don't say it because I write my own scripts. Which I do. Defeating the Dancer of the Boreal Valley allows you to finally gain passage into Lothric Castle and the location of Lothric himself. Lothric Castle is your ordinary castle filled with knights, archers, dragons, 
creepy arched over butterflies flying towards the peak of the castle circling around Lothric. You know, the usual. You also find a painting of the heretical angelic religion of Lothric that caused a civil war. You see, an angel visited a maiden of the queen, Gertrude, who taught Gertrude the angelic faith. But, looking at this, I think I see a connection. Forget the wings for a second. The way the armor is shaped. Yes, it's just like the larger deacons of the Aldrich faithful. The shape is the same. If we apply that to what we know about the Aldrich faithful, they worshipped Aldrich, the greatest blob of them all, which can only lead to one logical conclusion. Aldrich had absolutely nothing to do with this portion of the game. But Lothric's family does, and lo and behold, beyond a royal archive filled with guys dipping their heads into wax in order to prevent from being cursed or breathing, we find none other than Lothric, the Lord of Cinder who refused to link the fire and kickstarted this whole mess. Hi, my name is Lothric. I'd like for the flame to fade because my parents did unspeakable things to me in order to make me a Lord of Cinder. Please fund me not relinking the fire. At $10, you will have my personal heartfelt thanks. At the $20 tier, I'll send you free stickers. Apparently, you're not the first unkindled to try and bring Lothric to the fire, and he enlists the help of his brother and possible lover to fight you. The two of them fight together with Lothric's brother, Lorien, providing the muscle, and Lothric casting spells and reviving Lorien. By putting Lothric down, you finally have enough ashes to return to Firelink Shrine, where the Firekeeper will perform a ritual and prep you into heading into the Kiln of the First Flame. Here we see the true mess the state of the world is in, as it's converging onto itself. The First Flame itself is guarded by the Soul of Cinder, a manifestation of Gwyn and every undead to have ever linked the fire. It's a fun fight, as the first half involves the boss constantly changing fighting styles to different styles you, the player, would have been able to use. In the second half, it reverts back to Gwyn's fighting style as the music gives an epic rendition of Gwyn's theme from Dark Souls 1. And with the Soul's Defeat, you're free to do what you'd like with the flame. Link it and extend the age, yet again, or take it for your own. There's also a number of incredibly cool hidden areas. The Untended Graves brings with it a whole load of mindfuckery as you find a dark firelink shrine connected to Lothar Castle with Eudix Gunder again. But now as Champion Gunder and heavy implications firelink shrine is actually in the future and all of Dark Souls 3 takes place prior to firelink shrine. Strap on your dildos, kiddos. We're about to go back to the future. Pass. Pass. Dark Souls 3 combines elements from all the previous Souls games, Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, and Bloodborne, and brings them together to make an amalgamation that, in a lot of ways, really does work. And while I personally prefer the originality of Dark Souls 1 and the fresh, unique spin of Bloodborne, Dark Souls 3 ended up being a very worthy entry into the Souls series. It's How about that Archdragon Peak, eh? My favorite boss in the game is an Archdragon Peak- Wait! How are you talking? And why do you have Franz's voice? I'm a spy. I'm everywhere, Dave. Everywhere. Zara Innocentius? Let me show that for you. Zara Innocentius? This dude's name is Zero Innocence. I mean, there's only one singular shield, the wooden shield, which is fortunate, being that wood is totally bulletproof. I'm not making another fucking milk joke. Ah!